What's your name? The Cooper and Anthony Show. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there that you think to yourself, wow, that job must be awesome. That sounds like a great job. Well, people who do those jobs that you think are awesome are basically pulling back the curtain and letting you know that those jobs, they are not awesome. They're not as good. They sound great. Like mm-hmm. when someone tells you, oh, I, I do. I'm a freelancer. Wow, must be great. You work for yourself. You don't have a boss. Footloose, fancy freelance. How cool. No, finding work is a hassle. Getting paid is a hassle. And you and I know that because we we do a job freelance that we have to invoice them. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, oh, we never got that invoice. Yeah, I sent it to you two months ago. Oh, no, we're, we're on a three-month pay, payroll now. Mm-hmm. What? I did the job three months ago. I got to wait three months for you to pay me? But I'm, I'm going to be alive in three months. I'm my own boss, though. Look, it's a, it's a positive thing. <laughs> um, being a touring musician... That sounds exciting. Like you go on tour, right? Bang you chicks. show up in a town and yeah. So that's one night. What do you do the other nights? Bang more chicks. Cooper, I hate to tell you, but that never gets old. You can do that every single night and it never, <laughs> never, ever gets old. I know, but the travel grind, the getting on planes and flying here and flying there and the weird hours, because, you know, if you go from one country to another, suddenly, you know, at midnight, it's two in the morning or Mm -hmm. at midnight, it's six in the morning, like you're starting your day. It's, yeah, I think it's really hard. And from friends of mine that are actually musicians, not the famous ones, I mean, I guess if you're, you know, if you're Bruno Mars, all's good. Mm -hmm. But if you're the people in his band, it's very boring. There's a lot of waiting around. There's a lot of other people telling you what to do. It's a great job, but it's just, it's not as cool as you think it is. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Uh, Working in the film industry, you know, unless you, even if you're the filmmaker, I mean, you know, from my doing background work and and, uh, stand-in work and stuff like that, it's a lot of sitting around. Mm -hmm. And even the people that are the creatives, quote-unquote creatives, you're really there for somebody else's vision. You know, you're not there unless you're the writer or you're the director, which is like two people. Everybody else is there to make your vision happen. And it's just, it's a lot of work. You know, I'm sometimes when I do background work, I'm like, bye, I'm out of here. You can leave. Mm -hmm. But like... The lighting people, the grips, they have to break everything down. They got to put it nicely in the truck because they got to put it up the next day. That's, there's nothing. If someone tells you like they're a cameraman on major films, it sounds cool. But first of all, those cameramen, they got to, they carry those cameras now Mm. on their bodies. They do these body cams. They all have back issues. All of them. Every one of them has back issues. And it takes six hours to set up one shot. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, scuba instructor. I thought that was a cool job, but I just found out that, you know, it, it ruins the hobby for people that are instructors. You're getting people together who've never dove before. They don't mm-hmm. know anything about scuba diving. You know, you know, that's that doesn't go in your ear. That goes in your mouth. No, you got that on backwards. You got your right flipper on the left. Left, you go switch your flippers, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and it just ruins the hobby. And I had a roommate once who um, taught catamaran. And when I first knew him and he had a catamaran, we'd go out, we'd have so much fun. But once you teach catamaran, like on our days off, I was like, let's go out. He was like, oh, no, that Mm. is the last place I want to be on a a catamaran. (laughs) Like, I definitely do not want to do that. (laughs) Yeah, my day off. I don't even want to see water. Uh, Working at Disneyland. Do you know people that work at Disneyland? I've known several. No. So I have one friend that was Pluto. Mm -hmm. And... You're in this costume. It's really hot. And they do this thing called the love and shove. Have you heard about the love and shove? No. So when you're Pluto, I can imagine like if you're (laughs) Mickey, one of the big characters, all the kids want to spend time with you. You're their favorite. But you can't spend all day with one kid. So you spend a few minutes with a kid and then you hug them. Love, love. Thanks so much. And you push them away. It's called Mm -hmm. the love and shove. And then you grab the next kid. You have to make the kids move. Otherwise, they will spend the whole day following you. Uh, So you got to have bodyguards for Pluto. Well, no, no. You are your own bodyguard as Mm. Pluto. It's a love and shove. Hi, kid. Hey, let me hug you and move you along. (laughs) Next kid. Hey, kid. Move you along. Um, And then I had another friend that was another friend who was a Jungle Cruise Mm -hmm. captain. Of the boat? Yeah, she said it was 
Uh, on the boat, yeah. She was the Jungle Cruise, I don't know, whatever they call them. I'm, I'm, I'm saying captain. That's probably captain. not the word. <laughs> but people would throw up. People mm. would like, kids would do so. Oh, she said it was just, <laughs> she tried her best to be like very Disney and happy about it all. But yeah, people don't comply. It's mm. not. A, it's not a fun job.